Hello everyone and welcome back to the next lecture of control systems. From this lecture we are going to start our chapter number 2 which is block diagrams and signal flow graphs. And in this presentation we are going to discuss introduction of block diagrams. So let's get started. Firstly we will discuss some important points of block diagrams. So point number 1 is block diagrams are pictorial representation of a control system. So we are going to see some pictorial representations of a control system in block diagrams. Point number two, block diagram representation is used to build a mathematical model of a control system which can be emulated on a computer. It is a good point to understand, nowadays systems are analyzed on computers by the use of softwares. In that case, block diagram representation plays an important role because it can help to build a mathematical model of a control system. Moving on to point number 3, block diagram representation is used to calculate the overall transfer function of the system. As we all know that, to find out the output with respect to any given input, we need the transfer function of the system. And block diagram representation helps to find out the overall transfer function of the system. So now we are done with the discussion of introductory points of block diagrams. We will now discuss the elements of a block diagram. We will start with the basic block diagram representation of a control system that we have already discussed in chapter 1. And we all know this representation consists of a block having two arrows. The arrow or the signal which goes into the block represents the input. The signal which goes out of the block represents the output and the block itself represents the transfer function of the system. But this is the basic block diagram representation of control system. Practically, control systems are more complex in nature. They consist of multiple subsystems. Interconnection of many blocks are there, which are connected with branches and arrows. So to analyze those complex representations, we need to discuss some more elements of block diagrams like summing point and takeoff point. So now we will move on to the discussion of summing point and takeoff point. We will first see the definition of a summing point. A summing point or a summing junction in a block diagram represents the dynamic summation of two or more signals. So wherever we want to add two or more signals in a block diagram, we will use a summing point. This is the symbol of a summing point which is used to add two signals. If this signal is x1 of s and this signal is x2 of s, then the resultant signal will be x1 of s plus x2 of s. On the other hand, if this is the summing point we are using and this signal is x1s and this signal is x2s, then the resultant signal will be x1s minus of x2 of s. The polarity plays a very important role here. If the polarity is positive, then the signal will be positive. If the polarity is negative, then the signal will also be negative. In this case, the polarity of both the signals is positive and hence the signals are added with a positive sign. In this case, the polarity of one of the signals is negative and hence it is added with a negative sign. Since we are using the summing point or the summing junction in order to add two or more signals in a block diagram, we can also call this point as adder point. So now we are done with the discussion on summing point, we will now discuss the takeoff point. Takeoff point is also called as pickoff point or branch point. So the takeoff point in a block diagram represents a point where the signal branches out and goes concurrently to the other blocks or summing points. Or we can say that the takeoff point in a block diagram is a point where the signal distributes to several other branches. Let us understand this with the help of this diagram. This is a branch of a block diagram and we can see that from this point the signal distributes into this branch. So this point is called as the takeoff point in this block diagram. Similarly, in this block diagram this is the takeoff point as this point distributes this signal into these three branches. If this signal is R of S, then we can distribute this signal with the help of this takeoff point among these three branches. So this is the basic use of a takeoff point in a block diagram. It distributes the signal from one branch into several other branches. In this way, we are done with the discussion on summing point and takeoff point. We will now move on to reduction of multiple subsystems. As we have already discussed, the practical control systems are complex in nature. They consist of multiple subsystems. 
And in order to find out the overall transfer function, we need to reduce those multiple subsystems into a single block. We will discuss this under the topic reduction of multiple subsystems. So starting with the first point, in order to calculate the output with respect to any given input, we need the overall transfer function of the system. We all know this, the transfer function is an important parameter in order to find out the output with respect to any given input. Moving on to the next point, when the system is complex, that is, it is having multiple subsystems, then we need to reduce the complex block diagram representation into a single block. And then only we will be able to determine the overall transfer function of the system. So now we can have the idea that the primary target is to find out the overall transfer function of the system. Let us take an example of a practical control system. This is a practical control system consists of multiple subsystems. It consists of interconnection of different blocks connected with different branches and arrows. And if we want to calculate the overall transfer function of this multiple subsystem, we need to convert this overall system into a single block, where this block represents the overall transfer function. And the procedure by which we can reduce this complex block diagram representation into a single block diagram is called as block diagram algebra. And the block diagram algebra is based on certain reduction rules, which are called as block diagram reduction rules. We are going to discuss the block diagram reduction rules in the next lecture. As of now, we are done with the introduction of block diagrams. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.